at last everyone's gone out of the house, giving me a few minutes of peace. So I thought for a couple of minutes I'd talk about my grandfather, Sodar Iqbal Ali Shah, who holds a really special place in my heart. Um, that's for a few reasons, you know, because he was a writer and a pioneer and an explorer and a man of men. He was the kind of person that I don't think you really meet very often these days. And certainly in his lifetime, I don't think you really met that kind of person very often either. Um, I didn't really know him because he died when I was three years old. He was knocked down by a reversing Coca-Cola truck on Rue de la Plage outside his house in Tangier. And he died instantly. It's a great, great sadness for me because I was robbed of this grandfather, of this character um, who has inspired me, you know, in all parts of my life. But what I've managed to do through his books, I've got some of them here, and through his letters and through stories of him that people have sent me and that have been passed on in my family, I've, picked, I've put together this kind of patchwork quilt of a biography of him in my mind. Um, I love to think about him and I love to think how he would um, consider various subjects, various problems in my own life. I've got a picture here, I don't know if the camera can pick that up but I'll put it close, of him standing outside his villa with the twin staircases on the Rue de la Plage. This was taken just before he died and it <laughs> looks to me like a man who's impeccable and a man who has extraordinary aplomb and you know people who knew him would always tell me that he would never be ruffled by anything you could never say something and he would never go oh my god wow amazing because he was always in control of himself and and other people you know um i've heard from so many people that in some ways he was a control freak in a nice way i mean my father and my aunt have told me so many times you know how he got them working on projects, he got them traveling, he would suddenly say to them as children, we're now leaving this house um, because you've all become too attached to uh, your toys, to your worldly goods. We're leaving, we're leaving in 20 minutes. Or when they were older, he'd say, we're moving to Sudan, we're going to live there for the next few months. And they'd say, but Baba, why are we going to Sudan? And he'd say, because it will teach you things that you don't know now. And for him, I think life was a university. The world was this learning machine, this teaching machine, something to um, benefit from every day. And when he was, I guess, in his early 20s, he left Sadhana, which was the principality that his father was the Nawab of, Amjir Ali Shah was the Nawab of Sadhana, a principality in northern India near Meerut. And his father was the last Nawab and um, my grandfather went from there and he went to Scotland, to Edinburgh, where he studied medicine. I don't really think he liked studying medicine very much and I think he probably, truthfully, wasn't a great medical doctor. But I've read his diaries that I have here and they're filled with little medical notes that, uh, that he's written. And he said, for example, June 23rd, I prescribed myself a certain milligramage of of antibiotics or whatever. So he loved prescribing medicines to himself. But while he was at Edinburgh, Edinburgh, more importantly, during the First World War, he met my grandmother, who in our family we called Bobo. And they fell madly in love. And they eloped to the Hindu Kush, where they began this extraordinary marriage of roaming the world through East and West. And being the guests of kings and monarchs and heads of state and living in unknown villages in Africa, the Middle East, Asia, beyond. And it really was such a magical time. It was a time you can see it was so magical because in that time he wrote scores of books about mostly about the East and trying to package the East in a particular way that the West, the Occident as he would call it, would understand it. And I can see just in his writing his blissful happiness in this time. And then one day very sadly in 1960 his wife Bobo died and 
He was so broken that he decided he would move to a place where they had never been together. And he moved to Morocco, firstly to Rabat and then to Tangier, where he lived on Rue de la Plage. And sadly, in 1969, he was killed by that evil reversing Coca-Cola truck. And I have some copies of his books, and I have the first copies of these books. And he's written after, the, these are the copies which appeared after her death. And he's written in each one to my beloved Bobo. Um, I'm so happy today because it puts me a day closer to being with you.